Okay, I'm working on the roof of this boat. This roof up here. And I'm going to start by making one of these. I'm not sure exactly what the, the zigzags are going to be, but let me just start with a straight piece here and a curved piece up there. And that's going to be, you know, the pieces that go across. I'll need five of those. Let me just make one first. And just off the top of my head, I'm thinking, if I, if I take it, oh man, these pipes are not even 20 feet. Well, I have, I need to measure my pipes first. Well, my first thought was if the pipes are 20 feet and I cut a 10 foot piece here, this is gonna have to be slightly longer and the leftover piece is gonna be 10 feet, it's gonna be too short. But if I made that one the length it was supposed to be, this one will be slightly short, but it could just attach a little bit in and that would be fine. But now I'm realizing I need to measure the actual distance of these, these pipes. They're not on the side, they're on the other side. This is what I'm gonna use. Okay, I guess I gotta move a bunch of these out of the way. Fine. Did, can I just jiggle one out? From behind? <laughs> Over the whole stack. These guys are fairly thick walled. It's uh, two and a quarter millimeter or something like that. I think this would be strong enough. Uh, I have to admit, I did not do the actual calculation. But I, my instinct says it'll be strong enough. Whatever, let's go. Feet. Okay, I've got 19 feet, three inches. Okay, and if I, if I just cut the piece, the curved piece at 10 feet, it'll be slightly too short, but that's not gonna matter because if I have to make the sheet metal overhang by like, you know, that much, it's totally not gonna matter. First, no one's gonna step on the edge, and even if they did, it's such a, sh a small overhang, it's not gonna bend anyway. So, let me just cut this at 10 feet. Well, I can cut it. Yeah, I can't cut it in half because it's not 20 feet. All right, cut it at 10 feet and then see if I can get it into the curve that I want it to be. Okay, 10 feet. You know, if I cut this at an angle, I can get a little bit more length out of the pipe because I only need the top length here and then I can use the bottom there. Um, but is that useful and worth it? Actually, I think it kind of is because if this piece ends up being the, the piece that goes across the bottom, I'm gonna to have to cut it at an angle to match up anyway. So yeah, I can put the angle in here. And the piece, the curved piece along the top, it'll be kinda of nice if it has, if it's like cut in a little, instead of just having this, this flat 90 degree monstrosity stuck on the end of it. All right, let's cut them at an angle. I'll have to pick some specific set angle for all of them. All right, I made that 60 degree angle. Well, 30 there, 60 there, whatever. Um, did the other end so they match. The other piece is over there, whatever. And you know what I just realized is that I only have eight foot long diamond plate, but I have aluminum, aluminum sheets right here that are the full length. I wouldn't need a seam in them at all. Which would be kind of nice, except they're not textured. And I think I want the texture. But whatever, I can worry about that later. I'm gonna have to pick between full sheets with no seams or texture, the diamond plate texture. People are gonna be walking up there. Okay, whatever, let's get this, this thing bent into the right shape somehow. How do I bend this? I need to, I, I don't have a pipe bender. Well, it wouldn't be a pipe bender. It would be a, a ring roller. I'd need a ring roller to get that kind of curve out of this thing. I don't have one, and I'm not going to make one just for this. I think. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see if I can just, just 
can and do it. If I can just do it by hand, it would be kind of nice. Oh, these things are strong. Like they flex a little easily, but oh, it's got a bit of curve. All right. Put some muscle into it, Jamie. Oh, I think my metal farming table may be the tool for the job. I take this, lay it across those things. Maybe a nice whack with the hammer can get a bit of bit of curve, and then keep moving, moving and whacking. All right. After trying various tactics, this. Seems to be doing the best. It's a little bit hard to get the of the ends, but overall not too bad. That's pretty close to what I'm looking for. Just curve a little bit more on the other end. Yeah, that's about that's about what I'm looking for. Need a bit more. Uh, yeah, a little bit more. Took a bit of fine tuning with my hammer. However, I think I've got a good curve on this side. So, I'm gonna draw it and then get the other side to match it. I don't know where the halfway point is. You know, let's just draw, I'm gonna draw a dotted line. So what I've got right now on this side. I just need that one to match. Okay. Ooh, that is a good match. I got it. All right, let's make sure that line is nice and dark because that is what's going to be my curve measure for this whole thing. Oh, I better get a record of how far these are apart. That got me the right curve, basically pressing down to the floor. Mm, 42 and a half, 43, well, I don't know. About 43 inches apart to give me roughly the right curve. All right, now how do I attach this thing? All right, circular saw. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That should be thin enough to get a couple rivets in there that'll hold well. And then, I don't know, should I put something across here? I don't know. Got a couple rivets in here and two down at the other end. And now I'm gonna put a bolt right there to help hold this a little better. And the hole here is big enough that the screw can fit in easily, or the bolt. But up there I have smaller holes and I'm uh, going to tap them to give them threads so the bolt can screw right into up there. Because it would be unpleasant to try to get a nut all the way up there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So for this to rip out, it's got to take out two rivets and a bolt. 
and I can relieve some of the pressure in here somewhere too because I, you know, it's pressing on this a little bit. It is so solid, rigid. I'm not going to have to need, I'm not going to have to have so many, you know, zigzags up and down. I'm thinking just like one over here and one over there. And I'll put them at an angle like this so that when there's weight on the top, it'll keep the top pushed in toward the middle as opposed to pushing out. Because the force that's going to happen at the ends when weight is on top of here is that it's going to push this down and push the ends out. And that's, that's the danger. If these aren't strong enough, this will get pushed out and the whole thing will flatten out, blah, blah, blah. So I push, put supports this way, angling this way, to keep the force pressed back in. Yeah. Between those two things, I think it'll be more than strong enough. Well, I think that looks good. I guess, let me see if I can make five of these things. <laughs> Either need to use the thicker sheets or put some more pieces across. Either way though, that's cool. All right, I clamped that down in the corners. I definitely could not stand on this. That just flexes. Um, I'd have to put a bunch more bracing under it or maybe have another one of these things down the middle. Um, let me check the thicker pieces. This is the thinner of the two options I have. Let me check the thicker one. Wow, that is a lot more sturdy. Yeah, definitely heavier. Which obviously makes sense. This is twice as thick. <laughs> Yeah, it won't take much to reinforce that. Put a few pieces going across that way, maybe. I don't want to have to put another piece going that way. Awesome. All right, that's five of those, all within acceptable tolerances. They're all within like a millimeter of each other. If you, if you put one next to the other, they, they really don't very much. So those should be good. Um, so those are going to go one, two, three, four, five with full sheets of that diamond plate between them. And I may want to put more, like four more of these down the center of each diamond plate row. I think it's time to make dinner and I'm very pleased with these. Yeah, they look great. Oh man, look at those things. Ooh, yeah. So nice. Okay, so my three reasonable choices for the top of this roof are three millimeter thick diamond plate, one and a half millimeter thick diamond plate. Oh, I think that's gonna be too thin. And then uh, this two millimeter thick, not diamond plate, it's just flat sheet. So this is the middle option. And I just, I just put it over three of these things. So there's one on each end, which is in the plan, but then I put another one down the middle and I may end up doing that, just putting, you know, making four more of these things and putting them all down the middle. And with this one, now obviously if I stand right down the middle, it's supported by, by one of those curvy things. But if I step here, it's, it holds me, but it's more flexy than I'd want it to be. Plus, man, the, the, the diamond texture, really makes it better to walk on. So I'm gonna eliminate that one. And I think I'll throw the one and a half millimeter on there 
just to rule it out, and I'm probably going to go with the, the three millimeter diamond plate. All right, here's the one and a half millimeter diamond plate. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother clamping it down. It's, I don't want it to be that flexible. Like, I've kind of decided I want the roof to be like a real floor that, you know, people can get on and it's sturdy and strong and don't, don't have to worry about it, you know, bending or whatever. Anyway. All right, I'm pretty sure oh, the three millimeter will be good. Clamp it down. All right. I'm basically down the middle is fine. That's pretty good. You know, it does still flex more than I want it to. Though. Hmm. Like it's not that much better than the two millimeter, except for the the diamond texture is obviously way better. So. Maybe I do need to put supports going this way, too. And then I won't have such big areas where this can flex in. Oh, on a super positive note, these things are supported at this end, and then they only touch on the floor way down there. So there's nothing holding them up in the middle. And those are supporting me no problem, piece of cake even without any zigzaggies through them. So I can put support there and at the end and it will span the entire 10 feet, three meters, and I can stand in the middle. And there isn't gonna be anything heavier up here than me. This is the thing that makes the threads, you know, like the lines on a bolt, so that the bolt will fit into those holes and screw them if it screws into the nut. The bolt is just doing the uh, bolt. So, uh, you gonna come help? Or what? 